Okay, Hebra Chodesh Tov, Mazal Tov, Hashem, it should be a beautiful month of Smachot, Zat Hashem. When a baby boy is born, they say it's a Simcha, but not just a Simcha, it's also a good Mazal for everybody. Mazal Tov, that's why they say it's a good Mazal. We're starting here, here the baby boy. Yeah, yeah, big Simcha, big Simcha. <laughs> Today we're learning in the fifth parak, parak Hamishi, the last Mishnah, Mishnah Chav Gimel, 23. This is the last Mishnah in the Masechta, in Pirkei Avot. Even though we do have a sixth parak, which we're going to get to, the sixth parak is really bright Ot. It's not really uh, Mishnayot. We're going to learn it also. Amen. Really, it is a series of bright ta'ot that have to do with Kenyana Torah. We're going to get to that, God willing, next week. But really, this is the end of the Masechet of Mishnayot. And it's a very short Mishnah. And the Mishnah tells us, Ben Hehe Omer. We saw yesterday, actually, Tosvot Yom, Yom Tov told us that Ben Hehe and Ben Bagbag, according to some, is the same person. He was a convert. Ben Hehe Omer, Ben Hehe used to say, Lefum Tzara Agra. What does it mean? Literally, it means in accordance with the suffering, with the pain, with the effort, is the reward. That is the Mishnah, short Mishnah. Rashi points out, this Mishnah, as we find certain Mishnayot, they're in Aramaic. Usually, Mishnayot are in Hebrew. The reason was because this was a saying that people were accustomed to saying. And Aramaic was the common language for the Hamonam, for general people. So they kept it that way so people would perceive its message. And there's two, I saw two ways to understand this idea of lefum tsaragra. There's the much more famous way and then the less famous way. The less famous way, I just saw the Rambam here. Rambam explains what does lefum tsaragra mean? According to the pain is the reward. So the Rambam says something very interesting. I have to think about this a bit to understand it properly. But he says, Lefi, the Rambam says, Lefi According to the effort you invest in Torah will be a reward. Vamru, and Chazal explain, The only thing that will stick with you, that will stay with you, is what you learn from the teacher with Torah, Amal, and Yir'ah. Effort and awe. Yira is fear. Avul kriyata ta'anug va'amenucha. But just reading leisurely, enjoying. Ein kiyumla. There's no sustaining for that type of study. Velo to'elet ba. Very interesting. No benefit for it. V'amru b'feirush ma'amaro. Like the Pasuk says in Kohelet. Av chokhmati amdali. My chokhmah stayed with me. Shlomo HaMelech says... The chokhmah that I learned with af, what's af? It's anger, very intense. And that's why rebellion, melamdim, are required to put awe, fear on the students. V'ramulik, the Gemara in Ketuvot says, Zerok mara batalmidim. Mara is like, uh, it's bile, but it means anger, intensity. Throw intensity on the students. So the Rambam explains, if you learn Torah b'tzara, meaning in an intense way, in a, it's a serious way, but really the Rambam saying af is a very strong language, in with awe. So then that type of Torah stays with you. Me'a more, exactly. And that's the Gemarang Tuvot. It says that the more, the Melamed, is supposed to instill. <laughs> a very interesting thing. Now, what's the Pshat in that exactly? What are you tiny? What are you tiny about that, that Vor? Like, what's the. If Torah is instilled with awe, it'll stay with you, with, with intensity. If it's Tanug, it's not going to stay with you. That's what the Rambam's saying. It's Pshat in the Mishnah. Lafum Tzara Agra means when you study Torah Tzara with an intensity, Agrat, you'll be rewarded, meaning you'll, you'll keep it. It'll stay with you. No, it's not going. In kiyum ve in toel, it says the Rambam. It's more of an impact. So, so I, if he's smiling, if he's just smiling, won't have as much of an impact? Gets in your head? Gets deeper in your head. Right, so I, I, to just to be clear, I don't think it means the Rebbe is supposed to be mean to his students because we actually learned before, it has to be intense, right, intense. Yeah, not mean, but meaning, right, right, right. Lachor, that's the, that's the idea. Like the Torah was given, we say in, in Brachot, right. That's the Lachor, the idea. 
it has to be studied with a seriousness and intensity. If it's not studied intensely, so then it goes in one ear out the other. You don't necessarily see the importance of it, so it doesn't stay with you. Not, not, not to say that you shouldn't have like all that makes sense to the fact you love studying Torah. Right, no, you should enjoy studying Torah also. It's not like you're learning law. Correct. Correct. It doesn't have to be, right, exactly. Torah specifically. Now that's the lesser known pshat, but the general pshat of Lefum Tzara Gra is that the reward we receive is based on our effort. Not that it, the Torah stays with us like the Rambam's explaining, but the reward we receive is based on our effort. And this is really a beautiful way to end the Masechet because this is something we also say, Rabbi Yudah Nasi is finishing off, this is also something we say in the Siyum. When we finish a Masechta, there's a very famous sentiment that we mention, which is, Anu amelim vehem amelim. We put effort and they put effort. Anu amelim umekablim sachar. We put effort and we receive reward. Vehem amelim veena mekablim sachar. They put effort and they don't receive reward. What is the, what are we saying in the Hadron? The general reality, especially in the corporate world, is like this. You're not paid based on your effort. You're paid based on your outcome. Your outcome. If you, you work for a big corporation, a big business, and they give you a job, we want you to do this project. You could work day and night for a month, two months, 10 months, but if you don't produce what they're looking for ultimately, you don't get paid. That's it, you don't get paid. You work for a big uh, law firm, and you work and work and work, but you, you lose your job. If you're not doing well, you're not producing, you're not producing, that's it. You're not significant. When it comes to Avodat Hashem, we put effort, we work hard, and the effort itself is rewarded. The effort itself is rewarded. And as I saw, I believe it was a Tosfot Yom Tov, he points out over here, this is a separate reward from the schar of mitzvah. The mitzvah you're going to get rewarded for when you're performing the mitzvah, that's separately. But in addition, there's a separate reward based on the amount of effort you invested. So you're rewarded for the fulfillment of the mitzvah, for the daf gemara that you learned, that's for sure. But also there's an additional element is that you're rewarded for the effort and the work that it took to accomplish that as well. Not for the outcome, but for the work that it took to accomplish that mitzvah, that limura Torah, that milut chasadim, whatever it was that you did. We have such a zechut, we are rewarded for the effort, not for the outcome outcome also, but not only for the outcome, which would be the normal thing in the corporate world, in the business world. And this is a tremendous avtacha. What avtacha, what a promise that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives us. You're going to work hard. Sometimes you'll study that daf gemara for two hours and you're going to come out and still be confused. You're not going to understand what Abai is saying, I understand what Rav is saying, you're not going to understand what the Rishonim are saying, you're not going to understand the halacha ultimately, but you put two hours of effort into it. You are rewarded for two hours of effort. If you really worked hard, if you really worked hard, you're rewarded for that time. That's a tremendously uh, supportive feeling now because it happens. Or you go to do some sort of milut chasadim and an onus happens. Something makes it that you can't accomplish that. You're rewarded for the effort. Hashem gives us sachar. He gives us reward for the effort. And this is completely different than the rest of reality in the world as we know it. Hashem, we finished the Masechta, Pekei Avot. Yeah, what is it? Yitzchak? Limut Torah, Ba'olam Ha'ba. Ba'olam Ha'ba, ken. Sechah, there is a shita in the Gemara that says, Sechah Mitzvah. Ba'olam Ha'ba. How? He feels good? Oh, so he feeling good is not necessarily the Sakhar. Sakhar is something that we can't even imagine. Sakhar is next world. Yeah. There's a concept also in this world, but that's it. Okay, we'll stop here, Chavar Bezat Hashem. I'll pick up next week with the sixth chapter, which is really bright to Oat. Won't have Chodesh Tov. Beautiful new month of Simcha. Chodesh Tov.